You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point good. And now... Fendo. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hi there, ho there, everybody, and guess what? It is a Freaker Friday, although it looks like from the RLM chat, the lovely Miss Moose girl is going to be going out partying. And why is she going to do that? Because she has a life. (laughs) I do too, but it's a lot more sedentary than hers. Oh, well, y'all are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on this Freaker Friday, and yeah, 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 I know, I had a rather rude opening song tonight, but that was kind of my mindset for most of the day today. Go figure. Yeah, it was, it's supposed to be um, Employee Appreciation Day. (laughs) Nobody bothered telling anyone I'm around today. Wee! It's been a day. It's been a day. And I'll clue you in here in just a little bit. But first, hey there, everybody over on Twitter. Thank you, Barman, for tweeting me out. I truly do appreciate it. I have not lost and I have not gained any stalkers. I'm doing good. I'm still at the 382 mark. Booyah. (laughs) It's all good. It's all good. I'm still here. I'm still breathing. So I'm still causing trouble, hate and discontent and all that other fun stuff. But thank you ever so much for tweeting me out, Barman. I really do appreciate it. By the way, I am on reallibertymedia.com channel 3. Also on the RLM Spreaker channel and lots of other RLM and Num channels. Okay, over here on Fakie Book, which these people have been absolutely amazing today with giving me smiles and all that fun stuff. Because, yeah, this morning I decided to just put an announcement out there on Facebook that, um, yes, I have officially declared today as Fuck It Friday. <laughs> that is all. And I got lots and lots of people agreeing with me. <laughs> So apparently I'm not the only one that was having one of those days. So thank you all you Facebook people, especially my dear sister Catherine and Tom W. And yeah, Michael and let's see who else is on there. Les and my kids and Lisa B. Lovely Lisa B. who was so much fun last night. We, I actually I met one of her dear friends from Colorado and we went out for supper and had the big build burger thing and I had, um, let's see, pepper jack cheese, st- uh, sautéed onions, guacamole, tomato, bacon. Uh, I can't remember what else I put on it. I put several. I had to cut it. <laughs> it was a big burger. But I finished my burger, and we did not finish our fries because we finished our burgers. So, oh, well, go figure. Um, yeah. Is anyone here fighting for who? Ha, hmm, ha, head over heels. Oh, Slim Jim Flim is head over heels. Awesome. Ah, oh, there you go, Slim Jim. I'm happy for you. So, uh, in any case, let's see. Where else am I at? Yeah, Moosey saw it over here, too. Yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah, employee appreciation. One of my former co-workers uh, had a good giggle over that one. So, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's been a day. Okay, over here on this effing site. Uh, Grimner, the Grimner, the one, the only Grimner, but he's lots and lots of places, shared me over here. Thank you once again, Grimmy. I really, really, you have no idea how much I appreciate you, hun. Um, let me see who else has been over here. The lovely Mary B has been over here as well as Loki Luck 3. And I saw the podcast you posted earlier, Loki Luck, and I'm going to give that a listen later on. I also see Mental Pancakes was here as well. Um, and yeah, Loki Luck 3 is over on Spreaker. 
if you want to check out his podcast. It's uh, United Nation calls for 9-11 accuser to be released immediately. Hmm. So, I'm wondering. And, of course, KD had to say, huh? Did they have Dick Cheney confined somewhere? No, accuser, not accused. <laughs> oh, well, such is life. Uh, let's see, where else do I have to be? Minds. I got a couple more followers over on Minds, too. How awesome is that? Or subscribers, I guess, is what they call them over here. Hey there, everybody over on Minds. I didn't share it over there because I I was having a few issues with my opera. Every time I would click on something on the links, um, it would try and download a file, and it's like, no, what the f... F the f okay, I'm just going to say it because that was my song. What the fuck? <laughs> Damn it. Stop doing this shit. So I had, had to do some dodging and tweaking and pushing buttons. And you know what happens when I push buttons. <laughs> so there you go. But <clears throat> now over here to the RLM, which is where you need to be if you want to give me static, because that's pretty much the only chat that I pay attention to. I mean, I do get notifications from Facebook too, but... It's kind of hard to keep track of all this crap when I'm also trying to keep track of the articles that I'm trying to get through without having too many verbal faux pas. <laughs> yeah, overachieving when I do that, let me tell you. I think just me opening my mouth is a verbal faux pas for most people. <laughs> In any case, oh, Maddie quit. Ah, later, Maddie. Love you, sweetheart. Oh, there's Slim Jim. Bacon! Bacon! Let's see. Um, let's see. Oh, thank you, Grimmy, for always sharing me on mines. See, Grimmy shares me everywhere. I'm like a pass-around pack. <laughs> <laughs> Although there's most people that go, shit, that's more like a freaking hot potato. It just singed me. Yeah, I can from time to time. Okay. <laughs> yes, Moosey, look out. Okay, over here in the RLM, right up top is Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by his creator, Grimner, who is the RLM god, don't you know? I also see the lovely Moose Girl is over here. Once again, she's going to have a life this evening, so it will not be the Freaker's Ball tonight. It will be Balls to the Wall. So, is that like walnuts? <laughs> okay, moving along. Hi, Kate. How are you, sweetie? I hope you're staying nice and warm and toasty because I'm staying nice and warm and toasty vicariously through you. Just saying. I also see the lovely Beth Z. Beth, are you in the path of that nor'easter? I kept hearing about it. Or not, not hearing. Why do we say hearing when we read about it? Hmm. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, Chalcedony is here. Hi, Chalcedony. A double dip and a Chloe is also in the room, as well as yours truly. Hey, we got I be Don C and I be Don C work. There was no Grammy work today. Grammy was at work for a little while, but I'll tell you about that as soon as I'm done with this. <laughs> We. I also see Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is in the house, as well as the lovely JJ's from Scotland. And you know what? I saw some pictures. My dear sister, Catherine, from, sister from another mother and father, but still, yeah. Um, They got snow over in Ireland, and they were making snowmen and just having a grand old time. So, sweet. I hope they're having fun, and it's not too bad. Um. I know, Slim Jim. I say all kind of shit. You'd be surprised. You'd think, oh, my God. She said that? She's such a tiny little thing, and she talks like a sailor. Yeah, I do. Grew up with seven brothers. It rubs off. In any case, <laughs> uh, Juana Taco is in the house. Hey, Juana. I also see Meisterbrower. Hey, Woody. P. Bunyan is logged Ooh. in. Timber. Um, oh, the nor'easter is a bust? Ah, cool. That's a, oh, dry as a bone at the time. Ah, okay. Uh, I'll let you know, sweetie. Um, 
I'm not sure. I, I do have a couple things I really need to get to this evening. So I'll let you know, okay? You brought Stella? Sweet. Uh, let's see. Where am I at? P. Bunyan. Rain. We got the lovely rain. Hey, sweetheart. How are you doing, lady? I also see RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel, is here. Ah, oh, Boston. Baston. They have hat attacks there. The hats come flying all over the place. And they attack people. I wonder if they're like those James Bondy kind of hats. I wonder. Hi, Rob Works. Did you do the bubbler, hon? And I just didn't see. I don't know. I don't know. I also see Trusty Feller. Trust no one is here. Um, apparently so, Moose. <laughs> I think we are. Um, yeah, I think they cut me out first because I am a little bit older than you, sweetie, and then they took off some of the rough edges with you, but, mm, yeah, <laughs> it's all good. People tended to leave me alone this morning when I was around people. Mm -hmm. It were not purdy. In any case, trusty feller, Beetle! Hi, Beetle. I'm sorry that your head's not right tonight, honey. My head was not right for most of the day, but I took a nap this afternoon, and I am feeling much better. I don't feel like ripping someone's head off and shitting down their neck yet, or anymore. I just feel like giving them a piece of my mind, and it may be a really big chunk, but eh, um, we'll see how that turns out later. Mmm... <clears throat> Uh, let's see, BTC Bob is in the house, as well as Colfax 101, the wonderful Dakota from way up north is here, as well as Dima, and looky there, Gooberzilla, hey Goob, uh, sweetheart, when you get your spaceship, um, why don't you just swing on by, I, I have a towel and a thumb, <laughs> You don't mind if I bring my doggies and a few other, um, how big is your spaceship? Um, okay, let's see, where am I at? Kozu, hi Kozu, I also see Meisterbrower 234, damn, damn, it's like Sybil, only the male version. Mmm, Bot is in the house, as well as Moy, 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 hello Mr. Asmodeus. I see you, as well as Poxified and Popple Pond Sauce and Raymond Hood, Robin's gay brother. <laughs> You've heard of the gay caballero? Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, he's not really gay, but he's not really happy camper either. Well, let's just move along. Hi, Slim Dim Flim again. Hey, sweet. Oh, you're expecting flooding? Holy shit. And Teddy, the cuddly one, is in here as well as to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Phantom 2, who did my intro. Yay! Um. Oh, fuck you, Raymond. <laughs> No, I had a whole week of dealing with what the hell is going on, what the hell is going on. And then today, well, I left work a little bit early last night because I had people in my office area that were saying, we're just going to rearrange a bit and we're going to do some measuring. And I said, well, I got an appointment. I got to get out of here. So I did. And um, this morning when I got to work... <laughs> Let's just say that my job was still there, but my space to do it in was no longer mine. How's that sound? Because uh, everything except for my desk was moved out, which was my desk was shoved over into a corner, and all kinds of shit was piled on top of it. And somebody else's desk was in there. <laughs> and uh, my whatever stuff was not the desk you know, everything else, was uh, out in the middle of the showroom floor with somebody else's stuff stacked all over it. So I had no computer. I had no, I had no, I had no. And so I started boxing shit up. I was not real happy because a lot of crap was thrown on top of like personal items and all that other fun hootie ha. And so I thought, you know what? If you guys are going to be this freaking disrespectful and this damn shitty, I'm getting my shit out of here. I don't need this crap. So 
and uh, yeah I did do some work this morning some actual work this morning but I had to use someone else's computer to do so and then as soon as I was done I left said I'm done my work's done you don't need me there ain't nothing I can do here so when I go Monday because I will go Monday just to see what the hell's going on and we will have some chats on Monday and I'll know if I will be Graham's work or not. <laughs> Maybe I will be Graham's working out of the home. You never know. Oh, well. So, it was not a fun day at the races. In any case, it's much better now because I've been home. I've had a nap. <laughs> Naps are good things. Naps are, you know, underrated. That's what they are. They're really underrated. So, uh, let's see. Check out Twitter real fast. Um, ooh, Calvin and Hobbes. I love Calvin and Hobbes. Okay, I got to get to a couple of things here that I uh, highlighted, which, um, okay, that's from Gary L. That is from, ah, uh, yes, let's go here. Let's go here. Yes. Yeah, Raymond. Well, you know, uh, you know me. I gotta have the last word. So, <clears throat> yeah, we're gonna have some chats. In any case, from MadWorldNews.com, photos of Trump spotted wearing a new hat and snowflakes are triggered by two words on the front. Uh, now, Trump will still skin is just. He's entertainment, as far as I'm concerned. Sometimes it's not really funny. You know, it's like when you watch those suspense movies, and you go, oh, crap, and and you start hearing the diabolical music, and you think, don't open the door. Don't open the door. Well, that's what it's like when you watch Trumples. Of course, that's what it was like when you watched uh, Dangleberry or Clinton or Bush or any of them. It was like, don't, don't open that door. You'll let them in. Don't you hear the music? Ugh. In any case, Poda's Trumples has a new hat and it's systematically triggering fragile little snowflakes all over the country because of two words displayed prominently across the front. Yeah, apparently, um, his online campaign store is now offering shoppers a navy blue cap with bold white writing that reads American Dreamer. Uh, it's a reference to his State of Union declaration that Americans are dreamers too. Yes, we are, honey, but damn it. You know, when they say sweet dreams, they mean sweet dreams. They don't mean nightmares because nightmares are dreams too. And that's kind of so, although this is more of a daymare, but... That's a whole Piers Anthony kind of thing going on there. If you don't know Piers Anthony, a uh, science fiction fantasy writer, wrote uh, the Xanth books and all kind of moving along. Trumple's tr uh, epic troll refers to illegal aliens shielded from deportation by former POTUS Dengleberry and his Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, program, because they were brought into the country as minors. These immigrants are often referred to as Dreamers due to the DREAM Act, which is a Dangleberry-era um, amnesty bill that Congress never passed. But they act like they did. That's why it's still called an act. Did you guys not ever watch the Schoolhouse Rock things when you were a kid? Oh, wait. Those debuted like 50 years ago, so... Mm. Wow. Apparently, the um, product description for the... It's a $50 American Dreamer hat. No, no. No baseball cap is worth that. Sorry. <clears throat> Um, the product description is, we all want to live the American dream. And our 45th president is helping to make that dream a reality for each and every American. With our American dreamer hat, you can show that you believe we can make America great again. Okay, number one, sweetheart, it was well over 200 years ago that America had any kind of semblance of being great. 
and actually it was probably over 400 years ago, you know, before the invading hordes. But I do understand that, you know, I had to take a sip of coffee. I understand that, you know, people move in, people migrate. It's what they do when they migrate, you know, like when they start pushing out and murdering the indigenous population. That's not necessarily cool, you know, but Mm, it does. It happens all over the globe. Um, what did you do, Miss Moosey? Uh, Sheriff Vinny is here. Holy smokes! Twenty-eight day in a desert ghost town. Holy crap! Was it spooky? Hmm. Okay, what? What? <laughs> oh, uh Raymond Hood, yeah, I no. I I had me a fried egg sandwich and I played a couple of video games and then I took a nap. <laughs> it wasn't one of those um too pissed to nap kind of things, but yeah. Okay. In any case, getting back to this, in his State of the Union speech in January, POTUS Trump Stilskin said that American citizens are also dreamers and deserving of every opportunity. I think everybody is a dreamer and everybody is deserving of opportunities so long as that opportunity does not require someone else getting damaged in the process. Oh, Schoolhouse Rock. Cool. Yeah, I loved Schoolhouse Rock, Moosey. I used to be able to sing a lot of those, and I still do sing some of them, and then I have people tell me, would you stop that? You have a day job. Stop it. <laughs> okay. Um, so back to this. Uh, da -da -da -da. I am extending an open hand to work with members of both parties, demon craps and rebloodlicans, to protect our citizens of every background, color, religion, and creed, said Trumples. My duty and sacred duty of every elected official in this chamber is to defend Americans. And see, that really is, if you believe the whole premise behind the Constitution, that's the only purpose of the federal government is to defend, not go on the offensive all the time, which, seriously, people, if you haven't watched um, The Untold History of America by Oliver Stone on Netflix, Check it out. I made it through Nixon. I'm, I still have the rest of them to go, but oh my God, which probably set the pace for my week because I did that last weekend and man, I was just perpetual pissed. The more I watch, the more pissed I got. It's like, damn it. You really need to stop watching this shit. You're just really getting pissed off more. But <clears throat> yeah, the untold American history what they didn't teach you in school. Why? Because the history books are written by the victors or the ones with the gun to the printing press guy's head. You know, however you want to look at that. Uh, let's see. Trumple's speech struck a chord with many citizens. Yeah, citizens, which means that they are not um, sovereigns because citizens... A citizen cannot be sovereign. Sorry, hate to break that to you, peeps. In any case, it struck a chord with those citizens who had seen their chances of achieving the American dream slip further and further away during the Dangleberry administration. Not that Dangleberry necessarily did a lot of shit, because I think I don't think that position really can do anything. It's just kind of sort of the, the face on the bullseye of the target. You know, the sacrificial lamb, they say the buck stops here. It's more like the fucking stops here because they're the ones that get the ultimate. I mean, yeah, we get it too, but, and my thing with Dangleberry was he enjoyed it. You know, that's what really pissed me off is he seemed to really enjoy tightening that screw, little sons of bitch. Hmm. In any case, um, yeah, and his deference to illegal immigrants, which uh, I think we were all um, undocumented immigrants at one time or another, were we not? 
And then they shut down Ellis Island, and now they're all undocumented immigrants. <laughs> Technically. Uh, so, who, yeah, we should, or excuse me, deference to illegal immigrants who should never have been here in the first place. And in doing so, place the well-being of American citizens on the back burner. Okay, I got to say this. Um, you know, if you really want to be pissed at um, anybody over the whole uh, illegal immigrants coming here and doing jobs that Americans won't do, be pissed at the corporations and those that hire um, individuals who will uh, work for well below a living wage simply because they know that at every turn they could be busted and sent back home, which well below a living wage here in USA can be a quite comfortable wage where they live or where they are from. You know, a lot of people don't realize that cost of living in other countries, yes, what they get paid per American dollar may not seem like very much, but their cost of living isn't as high as ours either. So, you know, and I just, I go back to when my brother was stationed over in Korea when he was in the army and he bought 12 oil paintings that this gentleman, and he watched this guy paint most of them. He bought 12 paintings for a dollar a piece. And that was enough to feed that guy's family for a year. So you got to look at everything in perspective. Because just because you can say, oh my God, they only make $2 a day, you'd be surprised. You know, of course, they don't have the same, same um, standards that we have grown accustomed to over here as well. You know, all of our, we have to have ne the next new best shiny fancy schmancy gadget kind of standards over here. The uh, planned obsolescence mindset that has gotten itself very entrenched in the USA. So, you know, uh, it's one of those things where uh, if people would, you know, if they would actually, if they would prosecute those that are knowingly violating whatever kind of rules are put in place, because there's plenty of rules in place already. You don't need to add to the rules of, you know, immigration or any of that other fun shit. And the whole process is so, so bogged down and so messed up that, um, what? That, you know, people wait 10, 15 years to go through the legal process of, you know, getting an, a visa approved or what. And this is for people that go through the process. You know, and then the rest of the process is so bogged down because, well, government is ever efficient, let me tell you. And they have, for every one person that does work, you have 15 that are paper pushers that just make that work ever so much harder. Sign it in triplicate and then make multiple copies and then fax and then, yeah. So if you really want to go after to me, the root of this problem is those that are knowingly violating whatever rules there are out there by hiring people that, um, you know, because they can pay them a lot less, and that really is why they do it. They hire them because they can pay them a lot less, because they're here undocumented, and they live in fear of being ratted out. And a lot of times, the employers hold that over their heads as well. So, you know, I mm, go after the ones that are employing. That's what I think. And then, you know, instead of trying to uh, bring our standards down, let's bring everybody else's standards up. How's that sound? Sounds like a hell of a plausible thing to me. And no, not all rules are created equal, and not all rules are enforced equally. 
you know, like if if you have, and that's where the monetary system steps in, because if you can grease somebody's palms, then they'll look the other way when it comes to those rules. Oh, well, those rules don't apply to you because you happen to have more of that green paper, that magic stuff. Yeah, it's special, let me tell you. <sighs> but I do think it's funny that people are getting all bent out of shape because... He has a hat that says American Dreamer. I'm done with that article, by the way, because it's just, it's boring me. <laughs> it's been a day, and I get easily bored. I need a nap. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just going to share this over on the FN site real fast, and then move along to the next one because I do have a couple of really headlines looked fun so um, this one I saw over on mines it's from principia scientific dot org and the uh, headline is RIP greenhouse gas theory 1980 to 2018 and I thought really let's check this shit out greenhouse gas theory yeah now why oh okay and see it has that in okay hmm well a fresh analysis of government scientific records reveals the idea of long settled quote unquote science in the greenhouse gas theory is a myth yes um Yes, Grimmy, they will have greasy palms, and we will know who they are by their greasy palms, won't we? <laughs> uh, in any case, the claim that human emissions of carbon dioxide, I'm, I'm thinking human emissions of that methane-related noxious gas is just as... <laughs> yes, I did, Sheriff Vinny. Yes, I did. Um... What? You goofball. Uh, in any case, where was I at? The claim that human emissions of carbon dioxide, or CO2, act as a control knob on climate only appeared in consensus science since the 1980s. Prior to that time, official records show the theory as abandoned. Well, they found a fresh batch of idiots... You know, apparently all of those vid village idiots had, had moved on to the great idiot beyond and they found a fresh, somebody made a fresh batch because, you know, whenever you make something that's idiot proof, somebody will make a better idiot. That's pretty much proven science too. In any case, famously, on June 24th of 1988, the whole world first heard about the dreaded greenhouse effect from NASA's new champion of the theory, James Hansen. Hansen had breathed life into an old and abandoned theory, drawing from new space research into Venus and Mars, because men are like Venus and women are like Mars. Or is that the other way around? I think it depends on the mood. Thanks to Hansen's role, climate fear prevailed for a generation. No, you just had a, the fresh batch of idiots going, yeah, what he said. Recently, Russian scientists have declared that GHE, or the greenhouse effect, dead as global cooling sets in. Yeah, hence the snow and everybody panicking in Ireland. Although Catherine and her children are having a grand time building upside-down snowmen. <laughs> Apparently, a team of Italian scientists called for a deep re-examination of the failing theory. And other new papers uh, readily dismiss the CO2 climate hypothesis. And below, we present the stark evidence and encourage readers to engage in their own research. You know, I... I remember years and years ago when I was still watching Super Bowl, basically for the commercials, because they were funny as hell. I haven't watched them in years, but uh, I remember, and actually this was the last time I watched, because I thought, fucking morons. They had a GE commercial 
where GE brings good things to light. And a tree had pulled up its bark and uprooted itself and walked across the road and got closer to a house that had GE's new light bulbs that emitted uh, less CO2. And I thought, oh, obviously people don't remember science because um, trees breathe in CO2 and expel oxygen. And so obviously this tree was suicidal which is why it picked itself up. That is why the tree crossed the road. We still haven't figured out why the chicken crossed the road, but that's why the tree crossed the road because it was suicidal and wanted to get over close to a light bulb that would suffocate it slowly and painfully. Fucking morons. So, consensus as science? Yeah. Of course, you know, we should begin by stating real scientists avoid reliance on consensus opinion to determine the validity or otherwise of any theory. But so often non-scientists in the general public and media, aka corporate lame mass propaganda system, and certain corrupt national science institutes that like taking the money... You know, it's always got to be that greasy palm shit. You will know them for their greasy palms. They cite consensus claims to quell discussion and debate, which, you know, whenever you have a consensus and you have all these people that are, you know, putting forth this consensus, they tend to be rather uh, smut spewing. They would much rather slur than actually sling actual facts. Slurring is so much easier. And much more fun. It's muckraking. They get to play in the mud and the shit and the slime and they throw it all over you. So see, yes, the shit really did hit the fan. They're standing behind the fan, but what they didn't realize is the fan was oscillating and it got them too. Back to this article. In that regard, we show that the greater part of the 20th century consensus science itself rejected the idea that carbon dioxide causes global warming. The so-called greenhouse gas theory was first famously debunked by Professor H.W. Woods in 1909. Establishment scientists usually never decry the Woods debunk. Instead, they gloss over it and the long hiatus that followed because, you know, people died and nobody remembered because that wasn't in books. So, there you go. Then Spencer R. Wirt who is the director of the Center for the History of Physics of the American Institute of Physics and uh, is preeminent among establishment science historians in Splashing Gloss, Wirt's book, Discovery of Global Warming, is compulsory reading for modern students in the field. See, that's how they do this. Yes, I see flashers. Um... Yeah, just give me that first miracle and I'll explain the rest. Yeah, that's pretty much the way it works. <laughs> Uh-oh, Slim Jim got it. Duck, that's a dead duck. You're dead duck. Uh, what's that? Uh, oh, Snope launches new website to fact check Snope fact checks. <laughs> oh, that's freaking hilarious, Grim. That is hilarious. And I do have an article about that as well. Um, let's see. That one? No. That one? No. That one? No. Where is it at? I had one. Hmm. Maybe I closed it because it pissed me off. In any case, <laughs> that could very well be too. It happens. Wirt plugged Hansen's comparison of Mars and Venus with Earth and asserting life as being very fragile and vulnerable to any climate shifts, Wirt writes, In the 1960s and 70s, observations of Mars and Venus showed that planets that seemed much like the Earth could have frightfully different atmospheres. The greenhouse effect had made Venus a furnace, while lack of atmosphere had locked Mars in a deep freeze. This was visible evidence that climate can be delicately balanced. 
so that a planet's atmosphere could flip from a livable state to a deadly one. I want to know how he knows that Venus and Mars were livable in the first place. Maybe they never were livable to those of us on this little blue-green ball floating around in space, if you believe that whole bu bullshit. I think it's all bullshit, but, you know, whatever. <clears throat> um, let's see. Like uh, James Hansen's fixing of history, Wirt is masterful at making evidence fit the narrative. Oh, well, I can do that too, Mr. Wirt. It's almost, you, you get the E out of there and he's a wart. <laughs> mm. Apparently, alarmist drumbeater Andrew C. Revkin in the New York Times book review heaped fulsome praise proclaiming that Wirt's version of scientific history dissects the interwoven threads of research and reveals the political and societal subtexts that colored scientists' views and public reception with their work received. Hmm. Apparently, Revkin's words are subtly revealing of the importance of appearance in science and public perception. Glowing praise to wart on the backside of humanity came, and, um, oh, and it came from Fred Pierce of the UK's Independent. Hmm. It's almost two centuries since a French, French mathematician, Jean-Baptiste uh, Fourier, so how do you say? I don't know. Jean-Baptiste. He discovered that Earth was far warmer than it had any right to be. That's because Jean did not understand. <laughs> Apparently given its distance from the sun. Honey, don't make shit up. But <clears throat> we could uh, be forgiving for thinking that we've had two centuries, no less, of CO2 settled science, couldn't we? Nah. So if you follow the money, follow the money, blah, 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 blah. There are too few that have scratched beneath the surface of Spencer Wirt's compelling and biased narrative. If they had, they would have sound, found some very disturbing pronouncements of consensus science wonderfulness to jar such faith. Because what Wirt and others... Uh, other establishment lackeys won't tell you is that the American Meteorological Society as well as Britain's top climate scientist C.E.P. Brooks no less published the most damning assessments discrediting Wirt's big greenhouse gas fiction. Wirt and so many profiting from the scam won't admit that it doesn't pay to come clean and jump off the billion-dollar global warming gravy train. Professor Takeda Kunohiko, who is the vice chancellor of the Institute of Science and Technology Research in Chaba University in Japan, sums it up succinctly. CO2 emissions make absolutely no difference one way or the other. Every scientist knows this, but it doesn't pay to say so. Bada bing, bada boom. But Wirt and Co. would rather you not know that there are more than 65 known iterations jockeying for position in the greenhouse gas theory. Many are self-contradictory uh, and unphysical. By contrast, we don't have 65 variations of the laws of gravity. Plus, there are no less than 53 bogus authority statements online declaring the Earth's atmosphere does act like a greenhouse. Yes, my dear? Um... Oh, sweetie, uh, da, 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 da. that sounds fun, but I can't, I can't do any more, um, okay, nope, I can't do any more, any, play any music, because I don't edit, <laughs> You know, once I do the initial, which is why I, I, I don't kick in my speaker until the song is like 
got maybe 20 seconds left because I don't edit in the middle. I just don't. Too many button pushings. <clears throat> but let me see if we can we can chit chat here later. Let me get through this one and one more um, about Snoops. So, um, let's see. Hansen cooling is warming flip flop. Yeah, that's how they came up with the whole climate change thing. Because Wirt also fails to tell readers that in 1967, Hansen claimed when he was a fringe theorist that there was a global or a greenhouse effect and it was likely induced by dust or aerosol particulates, which, yes, that does happen and they are doing that. Um, I know, Grimmy. Um, yeah, well, there there aren't greenhouse gases per se, like the way that they talk about greenhouse gases. But when you have certain rectal emissions, <laughs> there are times when everyone within the house um, turns green from those rectal emissions. So, you know, sometimes you just got to go, wow. Let's see. And, hon, you need, to, I sent you a contact request, and you have to um, respond to that. Because it won't let me talk to you until you accept the con contact request anyway. So, it's weird. I don't know. Uh, in any case, back to this. Dun, dun, dun. So, Hansen has been pitching his dust insulation model, or DIM, to dim the world to anyone and everyone after obtaining his Ph.D. from the University of Iowa and started working at NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies. I wonder if Hansen um, is along the same lines as uh, Bill Nye the Science Guy, who, you know, yeah, he worked for Boeing for a while there. He was an engineer with Boeing, and he was also an aspiring um stand-up comedian and he got hired as a stand-up comedian being Bill Nye the science guy but there's so many people that think he's really science <laughs> yes it is a whole different thing Grim but yeah um. <laughs> okay uh, moving along on this one Dun, dun, dun. Which, by the way, that whole dim thing, the dust insulation model, that's what they're doing with putting those particulates up in the upper atmosphere right now. You know, the nanoparticles of aluminum and strontium and barium and whatever else, other nasties they put in that, a.k.a. chemtrails. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Is there... Um, doing the chemtrail shit and they're they're trying to dim the sunlight that gets to us but what the dumbasses don't realize or maybe they do realize no I don't think they really realize that this is going to affect them adversely as well it really will it's just sheer stupidity they need to stop it in any case <clears throat> there was um in the 1970s, disaster science became a rage and inspired by Emmanuel Vel uh, Velikovsky, who is a leading advocate of catastrophicist. What? These are ideas as opposed to the prevailing inform informationarianism, such nonsense, whatever. And apparently we have runaway greenhouse gases, which that's just when you have a chili fest that you have runaway greenhouse gases because people are emitting green gases and everyone's running away. Um, it wasn't until television science celebrity and fellow catastrophist Carl Sagan, who won fame with his claims about the runaway greenhouse effect, yeah, Carl Sagan, mm, on Venus, all due to carbon dioxide, that Hansen got the, on the new bandwagon Meanwhile, a contemporary of Sagan, American physicist Richard Feynman, discredited the greenhouse gas effect 
and today independent scientists using the latest data from space probes have a better idea of what's happening on Venus. Moreover, a new study that was published suggests that life is not fragile but enduring and likely common throughout the universe on many planets like ours. So, um, this goes on quite a bit and it's like, wow, charlatans and and chicken littles and all kind of other fun stuff and this really is a very long one so I'm going to let y'all peruse this diatribe at your convenience because wow that's a long one and yeah the chemtrails can go on forever and ever and ever and they're and then there's times where I just get there and I just like stop it just just stop it yeah you can stare at the sun and that they are affecting the atmosphere and that is not a good thing not a good thing so let me put this over on this effin site as well and oh no i don't want to use that emoticon i want to do this one yeah because it's so sad it is going away as soon as people stop believing in it. There are so many people out there that still honestly believe in the greenhouse effect shit. And I have to tell them, honey, you want to reverse the greenhouse effect? Whatever they're saying is the greenhouse effect. All you got to do is plant some trees. Or grow hemp. Because it's also very, very good at um, taking the... Um, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and lots of other pollutants in the atmosphere and cleansing them out of the atmosphere and also cleansing them out of the soil and releasing beneficial things to the atmosphere and the soil. Yes, grow hemp. Grow hemp. Flash would be proud of that one. Now, I got to go to this one. And yes, it's from Faux News. But I have to go there. YouTube has tapped the far left group to help police content, a report says. And what far left group is that? Well, it's the Southern Poverty Law Center. Yeah, and they are helping assist YouTube with policing content. This is according to the Daily Caller. Yeah, the Law Center, or SPLC, bills itself as a civil rights organization that is dedicated to fighting hate and bigotry, but was accused by Politico in 2017 of overstepping its bounds. You think? You think? The SPLC site proudly declares that it has toppled in institutional racism and stamped out remnants of Jim Crow segregation, destroyed some of the nation's most violent white supremacist groups, and protected the civil rights of children, women, and disabled immigrants and migrant workers. You know, if you use all of these big lots and lots of um, fancy schmancy words, you know, start using five dollar words instead of 25 cent words, people think you're really smart and and they'll go, wow, they must know what they're talking about. No, they just have a thesaurus and spell check. <laughs> That's pretty much what they got. Oh, they also are protecting the LGBT community, prisoners, and many others who face discrimination, abuse, or exploitation. How effah. Politico asked if SPLC is overplaying its hand by becoming more of a partisan progressive hit operation than a civil rights watchdog, at least during the trump Silskin administration. Critics say the group abuses its position as an arbiter of hatred by labeling legitimate players hate groups and extremists to keep the attention off its liberal donors and grind a political axe. You know, those people that, you know, oh, you know, oh, there was a gal that was listed as um, a hate spewer. She's from Somalia, and she had the female genitalia mutilation done to her when she was a child. And um, 
She has escaped from there, and she speaks out against Islam. But she is a hate person, a hate spewer, and she's an Islamophobia, or an Islamophobic, because, well, she's telling people what she went through as a child, and we can't have that. We can't have that. Someone actually living through those barbaric procedures and then explaining just exactly how it's done and how it affects their life. We can't have such things. You hate spewer, you. So. Dun, dun, dun. My phone just went off. I have no idea why. In any case. Um, the con controversial group is one of the organizations that YouTube has selected to help police the site for extremist content, according to the Daily Caller, citing a source with knowledge of the arrangement. Aha! Uh -huh. So, while several of YouTube's partners in the program used to help flag hateful content on the platform, um, have publicly said that they're participating, others remain concealed by a confidentiality agreement. The SPLC did not immediately respond for a request, uh, request for comment, and the SPLC's close involvement in policing content on YouTube is likely to cause consternation among conservatives who worry that they may not be treated fairly. Oh, I know they won't be. Have you seen how many, I can't tell you how many of the normal things that I used to go to are no longer there. This has been taken down due to YouTube because it violates YouTube rules on hate speech. Really? I think your snowflake stuff is hate speech. Examine it and you will find it's in there. Um, let's see, Hanson pointed out to a 2013 shooting at the Family Research Council headquarters when Floyd Lee Corkins II pleaded guilty to committing an act of terrorism after attacking the facility because the SPLC labeled it a hate group. The SPLC continued to publish and update a hate map on its website that details locations of groups it deems hateful. Corkins admitted to using the map when he decided to attack the Family Research Council. YouTube's global policy chief, Juniper Downs, wow, Juniper, those hippie parents of yours, honey, they did you no favors. She um, wrote to the Senate Commerce Committee last month and said that the company added 50 groups to its trusted flagger program in 2017, and it's unclear when the SPLC joined the program. So, we are taking a tougher stance on videos that may be offensive, but do not violate our policies, Downs told the committee, may be offensive. Google has claimed that the program will combat violence and hate on its platform. But Hansen wrote that it also provides little transparency, forcing users to take Google's word for it, that they're being treated fairly. Trust us, you're being treated fairly. We could have just cut your hands off. YouTube spokesperson provided the following statement. <clears throat> We work with over 100 organizations as part of our Trusted Flagger program, and we value the expertise these organizations bring to flagging content for review. All Trusted Flaggers attend a YouTube training to learn about our policies and enforcement processes. Videos flagged by Trusted Flaggers are reviewed by YouTube content moderators according to YouTube's community guidelines. Content flagged by Trusted Flaggers is not automatically removed or subject to any different policies than content flagged from other users. Doesn't that sound special? In other words, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. It really doesn't make a shit and bit of difference. If we don't like what you put on there, we're going to flag it and we're going to kick it. Okay. Yes, hate speech. You know, actually, hate speech is good because it makes you grow balls. <laughs> 
actually it makes you learn to toughen up just a little bit and defend yourself. And if you can't be logical and critical thinking in that whole process, then yeah. Oh, well, let me put this over on. And then I have one. Um, yeah, one that harkens to Monty Python. This looks to be a good one. You know, since we're talking about hate speech and all that other fun stuff. Uh, so, oh man, apparently Freedoms Network doesn't like um, Fox News links. It took it a really long time to decide if it wanted to post it or not. <laughs> you go, FM. Freedoms Network. Kick ass. Take names. Okay. Here we go. From the blaze. I, I found some real funny ones today on Twitter. And at, like in the last 15, 20 minutes. Because prior to the show. Because I was like in my own little world for quite a while there. In any case. From the blaze. School goes full Monty Python on gender-neutral pronouns to appease leaders. Now you must say, me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it isn't clear if the powers that be at Kennesaw State University are big Monty Python fans, but it appears that Georgia's college's LG or LBGTQ programmers in an apparent quest to spread the message of gender neutral pronoun usage have invoked a famous sketch from the legendary English comedy troupe. Assuming you're keeping up with the growing list of preferred gender neutral pronouns, i.e. here as in H-I-R, Z, Z, as in Z-E or X-E or C as in S-I-E instead of the outdated he and she, which I'm thinking, what? Copycats? You guys, you guys are just trying to get some attention here. That's all there is to it. Then you'll be glad to know that Kennesaw State's LG, LBGTQ student programs is sporting a pamphlet with an additional gender-neutral pronoun folks should use. One of them is none other, none other than neat. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what happens to those forced to hear that sacred word and Monty Python and the Holy Grail, right? It's excruciating pain nearing death. So I'm sorry to all of my listeners, but you're going to have to listen to me finish this. You might recall that King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table are ordered to appease the knights who say, Me! So, okay. The official spelling is N-I, not N-E. But you get the idea. So, and you have to obtain shrubbery in order to keep them from saying, Me! <laughs> and it's one that looks nice. And not too expensive. But even after Arthur and co. return with suitable shrubbery, the rulers of the woods have become, have now become the knights of who, who say, Eeky, 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 peeka, zoop, boing. <laughs> <laughs> and want another shrubbery to be placed next to the first shrubbery, only slightly higher. So you get the two-level effect with a little path running down the middle kind of thing. Plus, they ordered Arthur's squad to cut down the mightiest tree in the forest with a herring. Because, you know, herrings are sharp. So, <clears throat> to the creators of the pronoun pamphlet, yeah, the creators of the college pronoun pamphlet are after a few things themselves. While there's no reference to the Pythonesque sacred word like peng or niwam, the pamphlet does offer examples of how the gender neutral pronoun ni can be used respectfully. In other words, you shouldn't say ni, you should say ni laughed, or that is nears, or ni liked nimself. What the fuck? 
<laughs> These people are maroons is what they are. The pamphlet also instructs readers to ask others what pronouns they prefer since at any point in time they may change their pronouns without changing their name, appearance, or gender identity. I'm thinking the pronoun I'm more inclined to use when it comes to some of these individuals is fucker. Hi, fucker. <laughs> I mean, that's it's a gender neutral kind of pronoun. And, you know, although it's a little crass, I think they're a lot crass. That's my opinion. And so, therefore, that is my preferred gender neutral pronoun. And if you wish to refer to me as fucker, you just go right ahead. Because I will say, well, hi back to you, fucker. <laughs> it sounds like a hell of a plan to me. So, they even have... A wonderful printout of all of the uh, different pronouns, gender neutral pronouns you can use. I actually prefer the pigs gender neutral pronouns. Him, her, it. Him, her, it. You know, just, just spit that out. Hi, him, her, it. Or me. Or fucker. <laughs> I mean, those are the options you're going to get out of me. So, if you fail to use me or the other preferred gender neutral pronouns, the pamphlet says that most people appreciate a quick apology and correction at the time of the mistake. Mm, well, how about I say me, fucker? <laughs> it even offers an example of how you might phrase your mea culpa. Well, her books are, oh, I'm sorry, here books are over there. So instead of H-E-R, it's H-I-R. Ugh. Ugh. I'll dot your eye. Neat, fucker. <laughs> By correcting yourself, you're modeling respectful pronoun use for others in the conversation, the pamphlet continues. And if you only realize the mistake later, a brief apology can say, Oh, I'm sorry I used the wrong pronoun earlier. I'll be more careful next time. Neat, fucker. <laughs> For the record, King Arthur corrected himself by saying the knights who say till recently said neat. You know, so he even corrected himself in the movie. Now, should you correct others' pronoun usage? Well, according to the pamphlet... It also offers tips for readers who may want to straighten out guilty parties in the gender-neutral pronoun struggle. Just say, me, fucker. <laughs> Some people may not want a lot of public attention to their pronouns, while others will appreciate you standing up for them. Hmm, if someone uses the wrong pronoun for a person who isn't present, try a brief correction. I think Sam uses she and her pronouns, and yes, I'm going to her house later too. But if you don't want to use those pronouns, there's always neat fucker. Yeah. So what else does the college say about neat? Apparently, it said that it didn't hear back from Kennesaw, or Campus Reform said it didn't hear back from Kennesaw State Media Officer Tammy Demmel in time for publication, although her acknowledgement of the outlet's request for a comment on the pamphlet. Ooh, this writer's perspective is that the evil knight's outrageous demands and the endless hoops they make Arthur's crew jump through is strikingly symbolic of the proponents of gender-neutral pronouns and their moves to alter and monitor speech on campus sites. No, the knights didn't, don't demand that Arthur use the word neat or knight to be hand-wringingly precise, but the sacred word is still used as a threat, and hearing it causes actual pain. The hilarity of the ridiculous plot, uh, plot elements speaks to the apparent pain others feel when incorrect pronouns are used in their presence, which means that I will start saying, neat, fucker. 
The Python fo uh, fellows take the inane prospect further by having King Arthur and Co. use the word neat upon others to get what they want. And with actual weapons, they discover that saying neat gets them places. So, to take things to an even greater extreme, King Arthur corrects Sir uh, Bedivere on the proper pronunciation of the word as the vocally challenged knight keeps saying n rather than ni. So, heaven forbid any of us get our signals crossed like that. Yes, it is beyond dispute that correct and approved language already is being used as a weapon and a threat. And even though those who accidentally fail to comply are getting punished, yeah, yeah. Now ask yourself, to what extent in the years to come will such incorrect speech result in retribution, all because of a growing number of woke individuals have decided that what can be uttered and what can't be uttered. Like, neat, fucker. So, while you ponder that disturbing question, here's a classic look at the dangers of saying neat to unsuspecting elderly women, shrubbers, and Arthurian knights. And hopefully you can pass this on too. And it's got a little clip of the video at the bottom for your listening pleasure. And practice your neat pronunciation because you may have a fucker that needs to hear it. Ah, thank you ever so much, Rob Works, for doing that. So, dun, 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 dun. Okay. Oh, yes, Raymond. Um, Carlin would have had a blast. A blast. With the neat and the gender neutral and the, yeah. I, I think I am, though. Next time someone tells me that I need to use a proper pronoun, I will just tell them that I read about this and my gender neutral pronoun is neat fucker <laughs> truly is gender neutral so we'll just use this one okay now I need to get to the pig because I got to do this date in history yes somebody's flashing me Oh, <laughs> that's not the hiccups, Raymond. I'm being gender neutral. <laughs> Don't you know? Okay. <laughs> I do like that, though. Me, fucker. <laughs> Okay, um, for their word of the day over here on the pig, we have Freedom Fighter. It's a label individuals, groups, and nations affixed to the team they support in another country's civil war. It attains an unintentional irony after our team turns out to be at least as tyrannical as the murdering bastard they deposed. Yeah, in the quotable quotes section... I fear the giving mankind a dependence on anything for support in age or sickness, besides industry and frugality during youth and health. Ten it tends to uh, flatter our natural indolence to encourage idleness and prodigality, wow, and thereby to promote and increase poverty the very evil it was intended to cure. That is from Benjamin Franklin, and I totally butchered it. Sorry, Ben, for butchering your quote. Uh, now, for this date in history, only have two. Huh. So, the 2nd of March, 
1933, a trailblazer when it comes to big screen movie monsters makes his gala chest beating debut. Excuse me. When King Kong premieres in the Big Apple. Wow, I did not know that. Hmm. This date in history, the 2nd of March, 1939. Better late than never, Massachusetts legicrats finally ratify Bill of Rights and spit-spewing Bun Ranger dressed only in chaps seizes or says that 147 years isn't enough time to think it over. Well, you know, Barney ain't around anymore. So, you know, who gives a shit about Barney? Barney Frank. So, what is this? The pig has done some fun stuff. In the Tasty Tidbits. Ah, it is their 14th birthday. Aha, congratulations, gents. So, what's your biggest disappointment where your publication is concerned? Hambo says, The Free State of Pig is more than a bastion of stellar satirical incorrectness. It's an idea factory which rivals all those snooty think tanks. But when we solve a problem and share it for free, all we get is a kick in the nuts. And Porcus's response to that question is, We've taken our share of slings and arrows over the years, but we've also gotten some high praise from many folks worldwide. We appreciate both the criticism and the high marks. As far as disappointments go, well, on our end, our humble attitude is that there is always room for improvement. Oh, Porcus, seriously? So, then the next question is, can you cite an example? Where La Hambo says, Landmine Lotto is a perfectly piggish solution to our border-jumping scumbag invasion problem. But when we offered it to DHS, the fool Chertoff got s very snarky about it and put us on the terrorist watch list. We tried again when Jihad Janet took over under Dangleberry, and he respond or yeah, his response was so profanely colorful that it would make Larry Flint blush. I refuse to be insulted by feckless fools whose idea of border control is rolling out a red carpet and moving the nearest welfare office closer to the border. And Porcus's biggest disappointment was, well, to start with, nothing. Hambo and Porcus are damn proud to offer up and post our takes each and every day, since it keeps folks coming back for more on a daily basis. We the pigs doubt that this Q&A session told our devoted pigsters anything you didn't already know about us. FYI, our Asian hottie interrogator seemed pleased with the results. So please, so pleased that she rushed out and afterwards to get us started on her article. So ah, they have an Asian hottie. They are also compare, compelled um, and threats were made to state that one cranky staffer insists that Monica Miniskirt acted like a freed hostage when she fled the pigster bunker, which is a crock. We got the nicest letter from the wench. Well, it was from her lawyer, but a week after the interview. And our legal eagle Stan Stan, the shyster man, insists that the shit uh, the shut the fuck up about that, but we see no harm in stating for the record that Monica Miniskirt will make a dynamite addition to Pig's calendar of women who have hit us with restraining orders. That's okay, Monica, darling. We pigs forgive you. See how giving they are? They're such wonderful gentlemen. <laughs> that is the pigs. Yeah. The pigs. Crazy Icelanders. What are the crazy Icelanders doing? Oh. 7 to 8.30 Central Time? Yes. Yes. So. And I have someone. It pays to flash you. Oh, no. Let's see. Harvard Elite Insider admits replacement of Europeans is an experiment. Ah, okay. So let me see here. 
Oh, he did. Okay. Slim Jim, hon, if you want to give me a call, and I can, I'll can, i have to adjust my volumes on this end, but if you want to give me a call, I know you wanted to, to uh, do some chitty chatting, so I will um, try to adjust the volume so that you will be able to be heard as well, although I have to keep it kind of kind of keep it op keep keep an eye open on my volume selector because yeah it has a problem sometimes so uh who are you talking about yeah i've still got 30 some minutes to go so if you are still wishing to, Slim Jim, I got through the articles that I wanted to get through, and I know you wanted to have a chit-chat. So, give me a holler, and I will let you speak your mind. And by the way, hun, do don't worry about the cussing, because I think I've dropped enough F-bombs tonight to cover for just about anybody. <laughs> subscribing to me over here on Minds. Ah. Okay. Hello? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yay. Hey, one sec. I gotta, and I, I hear off. you too. Good. I, I just gotta turn off the uh, other feed. Oh, you got 30 some minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, oh. and I'm just I'm making sure that all my volumes are correct. So, okay, I need you to say one more thing just so I can make sure the volume's okay over here on my Sam. All right, testing one. Two, oh, there you go. <coughs> yep. Testing one two. That worked. That worked. Okay, good. So, what's happening? Um, you know, I'm just hanging out. I got my guitar here, and <laughs> my girlfriend. <laughs> Has inspired me to sing the blues tonight. Ah, well, sweetie, it would be wonderful, but I have, uh -huh. I would have to edit that out, and Why? I can't. Well, because it'll get flagged by YouTube and by Spreaker for uh, copyright violation and all that other fun stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> kind of sucks. That's true. Well, yeah. if now, now here's the only thing. So, what if, what if I just play my guitar? And I don't sing <laughs> because I mean, you can't copyright. I mean, the blues is, is pretty much uncopyrightable. I'll just, I'll just play the, the guitar a little bit. I won't sing the lyrics. This is, I was going to play an Eric Clapton song, but, um, you know, I'll just, I'll just play the, you know, the chords and do a little solo. Now, I did watch a, uh, a thing on Netflix the other day about how the Beatles changed the world. And then I followed it up with a thing about George Harrison and, you know, Eric Clapton was in that. And he was talking about how he wrote Layla for um, John, or not John, for George Harrison's wife, Patty. Really? And that's why she left George, because <laughs> she thought, wow, somebody cares about me so much that they're willing to write a song for me. And, I mean, it took her a yeah. while, but, you know... It was really a pretty interesting little documentary kind of thing. Of course, I was enjoying the music of it, and I, I enjoy the Beatles, and I really, George was one of my favorites. I like George and Ringo myself, but, you know, I'm kind of yeah. crazy. So you know, I, 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 I wrote her a song, because uh, we dated a long time ago, and, and I, um, I wrote her a song a long time ago, and it, it didn't really go over very well. The, the lyrics were... Well, I was younger, and they're they're a little bit uh, offensive, I guess. <laughs> ah. I, I, yeah, and then you know we didn't, you know, didn't talk for a long time. But I should, I, you're probably right. I should probably write another song. Yes, but, you should. Yes, you should. I mean, if you have that deep of feelings for, her, go for oh, it, dude. Ladies oh, I, love the music. I do. Well, so is. I, go ahead. Well, I was just wondering if there was anything else you wanted to talk about. Because um, probably uh, well, what we'll do yeah, is, well. is we can wait until late, you know, 
it's close to uh, my ending time and you can kind of close me out with whatever with your guitar stuff if you okay. if you don't mind but if you want to not at all is there is there something that you wanted to chat about in particular um let's see so uh, I'll, I'll give you a brief update on um the world from uh new hampshire from my new hampshire point of view if you like <laughs> from the slim jim perspective yeah so okay here, here's the, the brief update so um i think the most important thing that, that just happened was uh somebody i don't know who it was like some some government official it must have been democrat i'm sure it was democrat uh, proposed a bill in New Hampshire that would have enacted a state income tax. And one of the really nice things about New Hampshire is that we don't have any state income tax except for, like, with, uh, there's food and, and, like, you get so, a hotel room. Okay, so you have a sales tax but no income tax? Is that the way it is? Because here in mm -hmm. Kansas we have sales tax and income tax and <laughs> property tax and and oh no no, and. no 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 we don't have sales tax and we don't I, I i misspoke um we don't have sales tax or income tax and the only sales tax is i think there's a little bit of one on gas and there's a I, there's one there's a significant one on um on prepared food. like if you go to the grocery store and you, you buy a steak you know uh -huh. no problem but if it's prepared or if you go to a hotel they're going to charge you for that Oh, okay. Okay. And then there's, there's also property tax. So it, it depends on the, on the location, though. Like, so there's certain parts of the state where you got no, you got no property tax. You got nothing, right? You can just live completely. So it. Apart from the, but, so is it a county by county thing? Because I know, uh, I, I know out here in Kansas, you can do. Um, they can sell liquor on Sundays, but it's a county by county thing. The county has to decide if they want to allow liquor sales on Sunday. Yeah. And and so where I live is a dry county. In other words, you can't oh, buy oh. any kind of alcohol on Sundays. But I got my Stella right here. <laughs> ah, there you go. Well, I got my coffee. Can you, can you but, see me? Yes, I can see you. I know I don't have oh. my camera on. Which All if right. if you want to be scared, because my house is a mess. Stella. <laughs> Bella. You can turn it on if you want. I don't know. Um, I, I just want to get to the point, though. Like the, the point is, like, oh, there she is. I don't think I've ever seen you. No, <laughs> not too many. Well, Flasher's seen, Flasher's seen me in my Eeyore jammies, so it's kind of, <laughs> he's been traumatized. <laughs> give me give me like 10 seconds of uh, radio silence and then watch this. This would be fun. Oh, okay. It, it, it'll be safe for work, I promise. Oh, safe for work? It better be. <laughs> okay. Oh. oh, there's the guitar. Oh, and the shirt. Okay. Oh, it pays to flash you. <laughs> Sweet. You know, my mother would wear that shirt. I got it for free. Cool. <laughs> I was playing my piano on, on the street in um, in Milwaukee one year. Yep. And this guy, he's like promoting bars or something, or some kind of like pass to get into bars. Uh huh. And he just gives you this shirt, and you know it still works. So you know, now, I'm not saying that I've actually gotten flashed. I've never actually gotten flashed. <laughs> the shirt, but, I mean, it, it keeps you warm enough, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> shirts do what shirts do. That's that's pretty much the way it is. But so. okay, so uh, you asked me a question. I, I want to answer your question. Um, okay. So, so like uh, income tax, right? Uh huh. In New Hampshire, we don't have a state income tax. Um, we're trying to keep it that way. And I've got a, like a whole, like I got a whole lot of friends that are they're all helping. And so I went. This is my part of the story, though. Uh huh. I went out. Um, with the uh i made a sign like we, we do this a lot out here <laughs> um, okay i made a, a cardboard sign 
And nobody would go with me this time, but whatever, I just did it anyway. Yeah. And so, you know, Manchester, New Hampshire is where I live. Oh, okay. The biggest city in the state. And uh, so I, I got my sign I don't know, a couple weeks ago, and I'm just like, I just, I said, screw it. I, I don't, do not want a state income tax in my state. And so <laughs> I just got my sign out there. And I just marched up and down the street. Oh, there you go. All night. Probably, well, maybe even two, I think two days. Do you know about uh, Liberty Forum? Uh, no, I do not. It's a free state project thing. They they have a Liberty Forum uh, once a year. They have the um they have Pork Fest. It's the other thing. But it was during Liberty Forum, and so there's some people. Actually, one other guy went out there with me for like an hour or something. Uh huh. But I was just. I was just going up and down that street, like the main street, bar time, whatever, with my sign, and I was just yelling, um, <laughs> no New Hampshire income tax, not in my state, not, and I was yelling loud, not in my state, not in your state, not in the Granite State. <laughs> well, there you go. That's cool. You know, and, and income tax is theft because, is. you know, it's it's one of those things where to me income what they classify as in or what really should be classified as income is you know like if you if you sell something or you know something like that and like if i were to sell a house or whatever and make an yeah. astronomical amount of money that i could see pos be being considered as an income but yeah. you know when it's the money that you get for your labors, labors and the monetary compensation for that, that is a barter. You know, you have come to an agreement with whomever is paying you that your time and your expertise yeah. is worth this much money. And they agree to it and they reimburse you for your time and your expertise. That is yeah. not income. That is a reimbursement for your time and expertise expenditure so to me any kind of income tax along those lines is theft they are stealing from you i i agree and, and i mean you're, you're getting into like the legalese of it at this point so like i i don't want to say stuff that i don't know about yeah but at the, at the end of the day though yeah you know taxation is theft and most importantly in my situation um you know We've already had we already have the precedent. We already have the the statutes uh, on the books where there's there's no state income tax here, and these people want to come in here and they want to they want to try to tax my labor. No, I don't think so. No thanks. Yeah. Well, and is is but, that like a constitutional thing? It's in your your New Hampshire Constitution, um, or do you not? And and that's fine I, if you don't know, because yeah, a lot of people I don't. don't. I don't yeah. I don't know off the top of my head. I, I have a, I have another T-shirt that has the New Hampshire Constitution on it. But it has Sweet. To out, of, out of the laundry. <laughs> ah. I have to do a little bit of research. But here's the good news. The good news, though, here, and yeah, the good news is that um, like the, that next day, we had, uh -huh. we had Liberty, we had Liberty Forum. It was this thing at this hotel, and so my friend let me crash on his couch in, in the hotel. Got up the next morning, go outside for a cigarette. Uh -huh. And this guy, this guy, he's standing outside, uh, waiting for um, for auditions to this movie. Uh -huh. You heard of uh, you heard of uh, Mark Wahlberg? Yes. So Mark Wahlberg's brother Jim Wahlberg was standing in for him as a producer for some movie about junkies. And we have a huge. I, I don't. I don't do hard drugs. Um, but we have a huge problem here, and I never have. But we have a huge problem with the junkies and fentanyl and just heroin all over the place. So mm -hmm. it's a big problem. Well, and, and so yeah, I think I saw something on that. Me and Netflix are good friends. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't have cable or any of that other fun stuff. Um, but um, I saw something on, I think it was in the uh, miniseries on Netflix, uh, Rotten. I think that was the one. And 
I'm they had sure. t they had spoken or one of the Netflix programs that actually was done by Netflix um, had spoken about um, the uh, opioid issues and yeah. how uh, some of this and opioid and heroin and how some of these uh, the new heroin is being spiked with something else and it's really bad in New Hampshire right now because yeah, they're cutting it with something yeah. else that is really nasty stuff and just dropping people yeah. right and left it's called it's called what you're thinking of is uh, fentanyl I don't know how to spell it but um, there's it's a very very so heroin is, is uh, an opiate opioid uh-huh um, and so if you go get painkillers or whatever from a with a prescription from a doctor that's also opioids yes um, but the new big thing is called fentanyl and it yeah. comes from I don't know like Mexico or like somewhere in South America or whatever and yeah they'll, they'll cut it with the, with the heroin and people are just they're dropping they're just dropping on the street like I, I, I meet these people sometimes um, I don't know any of them off the top of my head that actually died but I mean I know these these people I'm sure somebody that I've met has died from this stuff it's like it's really bad well and I think I think fentanyl is uh, a big pharma product Oh, that yeah. that somebody got a hold of and decided to start mm -hmm. cutting, if I remember correctly, because the the family that does yep. that has that pharmaceutical corporation that that came out with it. Thank you, Grimmy. He just spelled fentanyl in the in the chat. Um, I'm not watching chat right now. I'm just on Skype. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm multitasking, <laughs> 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 which is not necessarily a good thing, but um, yeah, there's. God, I can't remember the name of the company, but they said that they were going to stop. Well, yeah, what they said and what they do are two completely different things. Can't trust them. Yeah, so. so but yeah. Yeah, let me finish my story uh, real quick. If you okay, want. okay. Um, so I went to, oh yeah, so th there's this movie, right? Uh-huh. I, I, this guy, he's like, oh yeah, we're going to go audition come back at one o'clock I came back at one o'clock and basically I'm in the movie oh like I'm, sweet I'm, I'm an extra in the movie uh-huh um and so I, I still have to make sure that I have contact information with the people that, that made the movie um but I'm in the movie and then our governor here Chris Nunu I don't know if you heard of him yes I have Chris Nunu is our governor uh, Republican, and he was also there um, for the filming, and um, you know he did a speech or whatever for the for the in, you know for the, in the movie. Uh huh. And we're all standing around clapping and everything. But the most important thing to remember, though, <laughs> is <laughs> while we're waiting for for the all these Hollywood guys to get all set up and everything, he's standing off to the side. I walk over to him like, "Hey, Chris Nuna, what's up?" I'm you know. Well, I, I was very formal. I was very nice to him and everything. But I'm like, can you, are, are you going, um, what's, what's your opinion on HB 268? I think it's HB 268. You can look it up, but I think it's HB 268. And he, he's like, I don't know what it is. And then I kind of explained that it was an you know, income tax bill. Uh -huh. said, oh, I cannot, I can't vote for it. He said, I can't vote for it. So I count that as a win. Sweet. And then, you know, I got I got a lot of my friends on uh, various organizations. Some of them um, were doing phone calls to senators and representatives, or whatever. Was, yeah, I went over and I helped them, uh, calling state reps uh, a couple of days ago. And so we're yeah, we're not gonna we're not <laughs> we're not going to have a state income tax in New Hampshire. Sweet. <laughs> over my over my dead fucking body. <laughs> and see. The surrounding states around here, of course, Colorado keeps changing their stuff because um, according to the Colorado Constitution, if they collect more than what they need for the budget for the year, they have to reimburse that back to the taxpayers. So with all of this uh, legalization of marijuana and all that fun stuff in Colorado, they're having to redo <laughs> budgeting and all this other fun stuff over there. I know that in Nebraska, I don't know if they've got income tax or not but i know they do not charge sales tax on food oh. and so there's a lot of people out here in northwest kansas that will drive to nebraska 
to do their major grocery shopping, which is like an hour away, just be, and it's enough of a savings in the sales tax to go grocery shopping in Nebraska yep. with your gas and all that other fun stuff. But Kansas is one of those stupid ass states that, man, if there's a way to tax you, they're going to tax you. <laughs> yeah, we have um, a similar situation with uh, the state of Massachusetts. So, like, all, all across the, the uh, New Hampshire mass line. Yeah. There's just, they, they got shopping malls, everything. You know, anything you want to buy, it's right on the state line. And so we call them uh, mass holes. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's just what we call them. Uh, but, yeah, they, they come across the line, they do business, and they save a lot of money because, you know, no state income tax. Or no, no state. It's really, it's really the, the sales tax mostly. They, they go to the mall or whatever. Yeah. And, yeah, you yeah, know, it's. But it is a revenue generator for your state because, you know, oh, yeah. they come over and they spend money in your state, which means all of those businesses, <laughs> even the mom and pops in your state, yeah. they're generating revenue, getting income from these out-of-staters. And that's yeah. that's a good thing, you know, for them to be they're, getting that revenue from them. You're welcome to stay for the weekend, but then they have to go back. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you don't want them staying. Yeah, because well, that's the other thing though. Like, this is a, a serious issue. Like, um, what the um, officially, New Hampshire voted uh, for Hillary Clinton in the Ick. presidential. But I don't know for sure. But I think that it, I think there is some some voter fraud or election fraud or whatever. And what happens? This is this this is a, a well known um, uh, thing that happens. So they'll they'll bus in people from mass uh-huh and they'll have them vote and like I, I know this happens they'll have them um they'll have them work for freaking i don't know like the democratic party or some some nonprofit or something yeah yeah and they'll put them up in some kind of housing and they'll change their address for like a week they'll, they'll go into whatever official building and change their address for a week yeah and then run the voter the voter record and that swings elections. So, I mean, that's, that's yeah. a major problem. We're winning. Yeah. Um, well, and I know that you can be uh, registered in multiple places just because my uncle oh, yeah. Tom told me that he's registered in two different counties here in the state of Kansas. And if he wishes to vote at both, if he wants to drive and do the vote thing, he can do it in two different counties here in Kansas. And then there was a time frame where he was in Iowa. He's also registered to vote in Iowa as oh. well. So if he wanted to go to Iowa and vote, he could technically vote three times in one if he wanted to. But he said, "Ah." Yeah. <laughs> Grammy, Grammy, Grammy literally just said, Uncle Tom, that's racist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Well, yeah, it's, it's racist. Well, it's racist. neat fucker. I can't say that. <laughs> I can't say that. Use my pronoun. Why are you not using my pronoun right now? Neat. <laughs> neat. I just loved that article. That's it, like, oh my God! I'm gonna start doing that now. <laughs> He's already got one. Yeah. No, it's very, it's very nice. No, no, you had to do with the, with the French accent. I can't do French. Accent. Oh. You know that that line? Um, mm. They're they're in the top of the, the French the French guys. They they go up to the castle. Oh. And they're like, do you have a do you have a Grail? We're, we're here, for, you know, we're here for the Grail or something. And then, yeah. Like I I, uh, I fart in your general. Oh yes, direction. yes. <laughs> I fart in your general direction. You have you um, Let's see, what is that? Your mother is a hamster, and your father <laughs> smells of elderberries. Something yes. like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I love the... I, and family reunions with my family, yeah. There's always one brother or another that'll walk up and go, I fought in your general direction. And pretty much everybody clears the room then. Because you know, mm. he's just... that. That's the only warning you're going to get. <laughs> he's going to fart. He's going to definitely yeah. fart. He's probably eating beans or something. Oh, well, mm, I got brothers that it doesn't matter what they put in the mouth. It's going to make noxious fumes out the other end. So 
And I got a sister-in-law that can clear a room faster than my brothers can, so. <laughs> I told you I, I told you I'm an uncle, right? No, I saw something in the chat. You'd said something about an uncle, so. Um, I'm, a, I'm an uncle now. I have my, my, my little shit-kicking uh, brother. Had a, he's got a daughter. I haven't met her yet. Sweet. Out of state. But he had, he had a daughter, and like, he sent me a picture of her, and she's cute, and oh. Awesome. I wrote, her, I wrote her a song. I can't play it right now. It's for the piano, but I, I wrote her a song. Oh, how cool. Cool. Yeah, and nieces he, and nephews are awesome because you can spoil them rotten and send them home yeah. and say, but I'm the auntie. I'm the uncle. Yeah. What do you expect? <laughs> and my brother, uh -huh. my, bro my brother, he plays, he plays music too. Cool. And so I, I just, uh, I sent him a picture of the sheet music and then, um, you know, we haven't, it's been a lot. We haven't talked for years, right? Yeah. A long time, but I, I sent him, um, I sent him the copy of the, of the sheet music and, um, he can figure it out. I'm, I, he's not stupid, so he can figure ah, that out. There you and go. Play the song. It's, it's a nice song. It's like, you know, it's like a happy song for something that, that you know, little kids would probably like or something. I don't know. Oh, well, that's okay. That's okay. So. I just hope they're all happy. Well, happy and healthy is always, yes, when you have little ones. And little ones, for the most part, are happy. If, you know, if you treat them, you give them lovin's, and little ones will be happy, unless they're colicky. And then, yeah. then you just have to walk around with them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. So, is there anything else you wanted to... We're getting close to the wire. Getting down to like the last, oh, let's see, 11 minutes. 11 minutes? Yep, so. It seems is there, right, okay. Is there something else that you wanted to talk about? Uh -huh. Do you have any kind of comments on any of the nonsense that I talked about this evening, or? Uh, well, I can go back to the chat and try to remember. Um, yeah, what all you were talking about. Well, I talked about Monty Python, which we kind of touched on <laughs> that. Uh, we talked about uh, the Southern Poverty Law or yeah. Southern Law whatever the hell. Like or uh, Trumples in his brand new hat. <laughs> <laughs> that just, yeah, who gives Bruce a shit? He's covering that nasty ass hair. I don't care what kind of hat he's wearing. Um, or the global warming thing. Well, oh yeah, we you were talking about um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, cloud? What do you call it? Cloud? Oh, chemtrails. Uh, chemtrails. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that for one second. Okay. Uh, eleven minutes is I, I can play for eleven minutes, but nobody. Um. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll give you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk. So, so chemtrails. Okay. So and I already mentioned this in, in the um, in the the free note chat. Uh huh. But, um, yeah, so I, I moved to New Hampshire about five years ago, and um, from Illinois. Ah. And I remember. Yeah, Illinois. Illinois. <laughs> um, and I remember very distinctly looking up at the at the sky back there um, on a regular basis and just seeing chemtrails. Uh huh. Call me conspiracy theorist, whatever. I know what that looks like, and I know that's not a natural occurrence. It was like grids and stuff, you know? It was like... Yeah. Yeah. It's like they're playing tic-tac-toe in the sky. Exactly. I mean, and there's times when I'm driving home from work, because I'm, I'm out in the country, basically, and so I have about a nine-mile drive to get home, and I see them almost every evening, a big tic-tac-toe yeah. grid in the sky, and it's like, you assholes! So oh, I just yeah, keep that's... repeating my mantra to myself, and I feel better by the time I get home. But I'm still <laughs> yelling asshole at him. So, well, there's you know there's herbal remedies for dealing with that. I mean, you're, I'm sure you're aware of uh, some of those. Yeah. Um, but my I guess my point though is that I've almost I can't think of a single time that I've seen him here. I don't understand. I don't know why, but they for some reason there's I've I've never really seen. Definitely not to that level. Maybe like once or twice I've seen like a you know <clears throat> like a, a trail behind a jet or something. But um, yeah, back there, 
pretty much every day. I wonder. Yeah, I wonder if maybe that has something to do with the food production because from some of the things I have seen on chemtrails, all of that aluminum and strontium and barium and whatever else, it what goes up comes down. And so that gets into the soil, and maybe they're trying to disrupt the food chain because I tell you what, an army moves on its stomach, not mm -hmm. on its feet. And if you can disrupt the food chain, and I wonder if maybe that's not part of why I know out here in the Midwest we get nailed a bunch. Yeah, that's that's you have a valid point. Um, you, you're, you're on to something there, I think. I don't know. Well, I think they're dirty bastards for doing that shit. And and I've listened to that David Keith talk about the chemtrails and all that. And, well, it's called upper atmospheric spraying, you know, or, you know, putting reflectant in the upper atmosphere yeah, yeah. to reflect the solar rays back out into the sun so we don't have global warming, yada, yada, yada. And I, I, don't know, I don't know the guy, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, he's he's one of the main proponents for it. Although they don't call it chemtrails. It's upper atmospheric something or other, something or other. But yeah. he has been asked in some of the talks that he's done. People have asked him, so do you have any idea about the, the uh, detriment to health of humans, animals, plant life? for what you're doing here and he said yeah. well no we really haven't done any studies on that but it's really good for and it's like no it isn't you asshole stop it um right oh yeah mm -hmm. and raymond just said that Mon and monsatan did they made aluminum resistant crops so if you wish your if you wish oh, to be yeah. able to keep producing crops with all of this chemtrailing going on you have yeah. to buy your seeds from monsatan and the, the GMO stuff, like I, I, I used to uh, work on a um, an organic farm, this one other place, and yeah, like they would they would spray the seeds across the the property line, and you know, it's just yeah. kind of a normal thing. Yeah, they do mess with things quite a bit. And um, what's the other? Oh, and there's another Dr. Jennifer Daniels. I listened to one of her videos, which she's absolutely amazing. Um, she had said that if you have genetically modified seeds and if yeah. you do not treat because they're genetically modified to be tolerant of Roundup or whatever yep. chemical. And so if you, yeah, if you do not treat them with that, then yep. after and you save your seeds back that first that first time you don't want to eat any of the of the crop. You just want to save that back as seed. The next year, the ones that will produce plants, they will still have some of that genetic modification in them. But if you can hold out and go, you know, save seed back again and go that um, second year planting from those original seeds, it the will have, original, it'll go like the, the original, original ones, right? yeah, the original genetically modified ones if you can go two years oh. of saving seeds from those they will go back to oh. not being genetic modified because the they have to have the roundup on them or whatever they're modified to be tolerant yeah. of in order to keep that trait and if you gotcha. don't do that then they'll lose that trait and they'll go back to being just a regular seed interesting yeah. yeah, we're winning. We're winning. Like they, they think they think they're winning. We're we're winning so bad. Like we just gotta get it and keep the faith. But, yeah, um, that's I true. Some, I think it's time for a little bit of guitar. Yeah, I'll let you go ahead and. Yeah. I tell you what. Let me let me do my little uh, blurb, real quick okay. to. Thanks, everybody, for listening in on Grammy's Rocket Chair this evening on this Freaker Friday evening. And thank you, Slim Jim, for joining me for the last few minutes of the show. He's going to be playing a little musical interlude to take us out. Be sure to stick around because later on this evening, we got balls to the wall coming up with Grimner. Okay. Tomorrow at noon Eastern time, I'll be back with Flash a Rooney Dork for the Dork Table. But until then, please remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all 
enough. Take it away, Slim Jim. Can you hear my guitar? Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> 